Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to give a quick guide of how to map the reported measurement report to the related configured events and over events type, such as A3 event, A4 event, B1 event, and A2 event. This is very important information for during the handover signaling analysis and troubleshooting. As you know, that the, the related handover events and its related configuration and parameters such as time to trigger offsets and hysteresis are being delivered through our serial configuration message, which is being sent by the BTS, which is maybe 4G node B or uh, E node B or the 5G G node B. So now let's go through some examples to show you how to do the mapping. So this one example for 5G standalone handover, the, as there was a delay and even the handover was not triggered. This case was specifically for A3 uh, handover events, which is intrafrequency and 5G standalone. But initially we didn't know, as you can see here, many of the measurement reports was being sent by the UE to the GNB. However, the GNB didn't take any decision about the handover. So during the analysis, you need to know this measurement report is mapped to which event. Is it A3, is it A5, at what is kind of type of handover is being triggered. So, and also you need to confirm the related parameters. For example, if you did get to know that this is intrafrequency A3, you need to know what is the current delivered configuration for the hysteresis offset and time to trigger and so on. So the first step you need to do, as you can see, you need to open the measurement report, any of those measurement reports, to check what is the current measurement ID. And as you can see in the measurement report, already the information for the serving cell and neighbor cells are being covered. This information, BCI, RSRB, and the RSRQ, and this, and so on. This is the information for the serving and neighbor cells. So the first step you need to do to, to map it to the equivalent event, you need to check what is the current measurement ID. The current measurement ID here is measurement ID 1. So the next step or second step, you need to open the RR serial configuration message, which is was here for this one after the step. It might be different, uh, but you need to check which one of the previous matches, including the events of the handover. So this and this traces or the draft test logs, this matches was including the related events. Once you open this message, we need to check this measurement ID is equivalent to which report configuration ID. As you can see here, measurement ID 1, which is the same as, as the one sent in the measurement report, is equivalent to report configuration ID 1. And this, usually this part of the message, it's under measurement ID to add to mid list. Usually you can find it at the end of the RRC reconfiguration message. I will be opening a text files, which is covering all the, the details just to show it live for you how, where we find this kind of information. So here, as it confirmed that the measurement ID is, is mapped to report configuration ID 1, the next step we need to check this report configuration ID 1 is equivalent to which event. And this information you can find it under the same message, which is RSU reconfiguration. So the last step, we went through the message and we checked the rest report configuration ID, which is usually coming under report configuration to add to mod list, is equivalent to which event. As you can see here, it mentioned report configuration NR, the report type event triggered, and then you can see that this one is event A3. And here it's giving all the related parameters, such as A3 offset, here is mentioned 3, Six, sorry, six. That's like as 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 the unit usually is open five dB, so this will be around three dB, and then the, here it's missing what is the hysteresis time to trigger and so on. So this and even the reported and all the related parameters. So this is how we did the mapping. So now after after getting this information, we get to know here that the current offset, A3 offset, and the hysteresis is kind of aggressive. This is around 3 dB for the offset and 3 dB for hysteresis, which can make like delay in the handover because you might have some fluctuation during the handover. The signal is getting better for the server neighbors and so on. So the handover might be delayed and it will not be triggered. So this was one of the cases. And the other cases also, uh, I will be showing the next slide for one of the B1 event. Then we'll go through some of the uh, uh, text files which is including all the information for the RRC configuration to show from where you can get it from the message itself. So this is the next case uh, which is for B1 event just to show you like the logic of, of mapping the, the events or the MR to the equivalent event. This one for, for the measurement ID for B1 event is during a CGNB addition. The figure on the left just showing the signaling flow, flow for a CGNB addition. So initially the, the 
uh, in node B or the G node B will be delivering the RRC reconfiguration message was already covering majority of the handover events within this message. Once the UE report the measurement report, we need to check this measurement report is equivalent to which event. So as we mentioned, the first step you need to do is to check the measurement ID within the measurement report. Uh, I, what is the measurement ID? Then, as you can see here, measurement ID here was 12. Then you need to check this one equivalent to which measurement object ID, which is, will be covered in the RSU configuration method as a second step. Again, as I mentioned, the measurement report is covering information about the serving cell and neighbor cell and so on. So the second step, you need to check the, the RRC configuration machine to map the measurement ID into report configuration ID. And this is, in, as we mentioned, usually it's coming at the end of the RRC configuration message. As you can see here, the measurement ID one is mapped to is mapped to report configuration ID one. So what, sorry, this is, but here our message, it's not measurement ID one, it's measurement ID 12. So we need to check this one is equivalent to which one. As you can see here, you have many of the measurement ID and many of the report configuration ID. So in this message, the 12, measurement ID 12 was mapped to measurement configuration ID seven. So the last step you need to do, you need to go and check within the same RRC configuration message, within the same message of this one, this report configuration ID is equivalent to which handover event. And, and this is the last step. As you can see here, if we zoom in here, we can find that the report configuration ID 7 is equivalent to B1 threshold. And I, as you can mention, a report configuration interact, trigger type, event, event ID, it's event B1 and R. And you can find all the related parameters and so on, including the RSRB, history, search time to trigger, and all the other information. So now we get to know that this one is related to B1 event. So this will make it easy now to troubleshoot and make the analysis during your handover. So next step, I'll be showing the same information from the text messages. Uh, actually, it will be covering the same information, but I will just showing the complete uh, uh, message just for your information. However, it's, uh, as I mentioned, it's covering the same information. So now let me take, take you into the same examples, but we need to just go through all the contents of the measurement report and our CD configuration, uh, because this will be the same as you're going to simulate or you're going to check in your signal analysis. So let's see first the first case. We'll go through just one case and the, the, you can simulate the same in your own analysis. So for example, the first case is about the 5G standalone. Let's open the measurement report and see what kind of contents we have inside. Again, as if you remember, if you can recall it, the first thing you need to do, you just need to check what is the measurement ID. Then you will take this measurement ID, which is here one, you need to map it within the RRC configuration. This one is mapped to which report configuration ID. Then we need to check after the events. So I, just to re, if you can recall, a measurement report covered the information about the survey and neighbor cell information, which is BCR, SRB, and so on. So this was the first thing we need to check, measurement ID one. Then again, let's go through the report configuration, uh, RRC reconfiguration message. And we just need to check what kind of events are being covered under the RRC reconfiguration message. So if you go down here, you have this message, which is re called report configuration to add to model list. This one covering all the related, under this one, you can find all the related events. So for example, the first part here, we have report configuration ID one is covering the events for A3 as here, as shown here. Then let's go down more and check other events and report configuration ID. Report configuration ID 2 is covering information about event A2. So if you go down more and more, you'll find more information. So now we need to check the measurement ID is equivalent to which uh, ID 1 is equivalent to which one report configuration ID. So usually you can find this kind of mapping at the end of this message. So if you go down here, you will find this kind of information. It's called measurement ID to add to model list. So you need to check your measurement ID, which was inside the measurement report, is equivalent to which report conversion ID. So we have measurement ID one is equivalent to report conversion ID one. So if you take this message, this take us to the same previous one, just so you can make the search and you can find it quickly. If you go to back here, as you mentioned, report other report conversion to add to model list, report conversion ID one is equivalent to event A3. So in this case, you are able to get all the related parameters, A3, RSRB, and hysteresis, and so on. So this, like the other, other case, is showing the same information. You can just try to simulate whatever you have learned here. And if you like the contents of this video, please press like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for your time and see you in the next video.